So, Blodaweth is a character in Welsh mythology. She was created by the wizard Gwydion out of flowers, specifically oak and broom and meadowsweet, to be a bride for his nephew, who had been cursed by his mother, never to be able to retain the love of any mortal woman. Now, this metaphysical experiment turned out very badly. Blodowev soon rebelled. She fell in love with a local lord who often passed by, and she conspired with him to murder her husband. He could only be killed under very specific circumstances because of the uh, spell his uncle had put on him. The circumstances, to be specific, were on a river bank at dusk while he was wearing a net with one foot on a bath, the other foot on the back of a black goat, and um, with a spear that had been forged during a year's worth of hours when everyone was supposed to be at mass. Must have taken some doing, but Blodowith cooked that up. And her lover mortally wounded him, but Gwydion had another spell on him which ensured that if he was mortally wounded, instead of dying, he'd turn into an eagle. And he did, and Gwydion nursed him back to health and turned him back into a person and made him a king. And he later killed his would-be murderer, Blodoweth's paramour, and Blodoweth was turned into an owl by Gwydion until the end of time. Now, the story reads like it was supposed to be about gods and goddesses originally. And making everyone mortal creates certain problems. Specifically, it makes Blodoweth's story the same story as Frankenstein's monster. If the monster had been betrothed since before birth and was married off when practically born yesterday, and under such callous treatment, Blodoweth's rebellion seems take on a certain tragic inevitability. Now, in the poem, I tease out the, some of the uh, implications of the story. And Blodoweth I refer to as flower face, because that's what it means, and because Blodoweth doesn't rhyme with anything in the English language that I could think of. Anyway, so, without any further ado. Is that you, flower face, looking down from branches high upon this darkling place? Are you singing in the gloom of witching hours embrace? When comes a sound the soul to scry, is that your mournful cry? Did you come to take me? Or have you some message brought from past the grave gloomy? Or is it mere mice you seek to sate a starving belly that is with more of thought than of common hunger fraught? O oh, failing daughter of oak and broom and meadow sweet, freedom of sky above is your only liberty. The light of life that throve and in woman's breasted beat shall never regain human seat. The birds of the air persecute you where they find. The lonely garb you wear is the province of the night. 
So Gwydion did swear in bygone times out of mind, so did his powers bind. So punished your maker, who wrought you to be a bride for the lasting favour of his curse-stained sister's son. But deceit and murder were the dowry you provide ere fate was satisfied. Forsook the ordained bridegroom for his neighbour, but to flight were not constrained. By deceit you learn the means, and your husband's life distrained. Twas your lover made the cut, and your efforts came to naught, for Gwydion in might made eagle of the dying, and living man in light, and a king of kingdoms strong. But he yet deemed it right to punish unto the ending of the world that betraying hand and word and will. O oh, flower face, had he right upon that altar chill to ordain fate for you whose heart's shaping was past his skill? Is your present flight rooted in your husband's blight that mage meant to defy? Did that curse that repelled all mortal women mortify even heart of broom and oak? Were you made a wry, and could any heart of spelled bloom's faithfulness have held? Yet wicked was the act you wrought. With blood your petals stained ever after were from pact dreadful you with your lover made. How came you to subtract yourself from the fate ordained? What was this thing you attained? No creation its creator can escape nor exceed. Though from his daughter father's shadow may be sundered. Honor is owed to father but to maker life's full creed. Which rule were you to heed? Yet. I the rule you broke, and doubly bear the blame. Yet no other to life woke to find mortal mage their god. Did wedding vows you spoke bind you just the same? Or did duress ease treason's shame? What soul did animate a body of frondescence born? Whence came you to that state? Are you no more than illusion of life, some torment clockwork of human form which can no condition mourn? Or was mortal soul riven from rest? Or had Gwydion keyed into airy realms and taken some sylph in flesh to bind? Can betrayer be forgiven who is not of Adam's seed? Do you see repenting's need? From flowering bough, the staring owl alights and flies on silent wings. If you like that poem and want to hear more like it in the future, please like and subscribe.